next presenting company will be Cordate Medical and with us today we have Anders Weiland, the CEO of the company. Welcome Anders and uh, I leave the word to you. Thank you very much uh, and welcome to this presentation of Cordate Medical. Um, Cordate is a Swedish company uh, spun out of, of uh, Karolinska uh, Institute uh, and an original idea uh, many years back. Today, we uh, are focused on two indications uh, within the chronic domain, um, chronic rhinitis and chronic migraine. And the news and uh, uh, lately communicated news is our achievement of the CE mark for the chronic migraine indication. And uh, I would like to present a little bit further what we do with that and what's gonna happen, happen next here. Uh, but first, maybe a little bit about what is chronic migraine. Um, the global prevalence is around 2%. And that's a huge number of, of patients suffering from chronic migraine. The definition of chronic migraine is that uh, you have more than 15 days of headache per month, whereof eight contains episodes of uh, migraine attacks. And that uh, calculated is around 140, 160 uh, million people around the globe that has this condition. Chronic migraine, uh, if you look at the Swedish statistics, costs an average uh, 120,000 Swedish crowns. That's about 12,000 uh, 12, euros or uh, equivalent in, in, in dollars, of course, per year. It, it is divided 20% uh, for healthcare cost and then 80% uh, on production loss. Because uh, during this condition and, and with this large number of days that you are incapac incapacitated, then of course um, you cannot work or work properly. Above this, you have also the prevalence for migraine at large, uh, chronic and episodic migraine. Uh, many of us have suffered from that during our lives, of course. Um, that prevalence in Sweden is around 13%. Uh, it's far more common by uh, women uh, than by men. Um, so this is a global condition and it's, it's uh, a lot of people suffering from this. What do you do today in healthcare to um, treat migraine in general? Um, a lot of the treatment uh, options have a rather low response rate, and that is across the board, regardless of which modality do you actually try to help the patient with. It, it usually starts with uh, acute treatment while you have an episode or while you have your heavy headache. It's normal pain drug or painkillers um, and then you can escalate that to special drugs um, usually called triptanes or ergots and a number of other ones um, lately uh, there has been additions to preventive therapy that is then of course something that can can lower your number of headache days uh, over time and the most fabulous addition to that uh, are the so-called CGRP inhibitors or uh, monoclonal antibodies. It's a rather effective, but also rather costly treatment. Um, in addition to that, uh, many patients also uh, use Botox injections around the face and head. Uh, a normal routine is uh, to do that uh, every 12th week or four times a year. And it starts uh, with different programs from 31 injections up to a little over 40 uh, injections around the head, depending on who is treating you. And there are also a number of other drugs uh, that can be used, uh, all of them with various response and also various uh, side effect profiles. What we do is uh, something different. Uh, KOS or kinetic oscillation stimulation, COS in short, is a treatment uh, that demonstrates in, in trials uh, very few or uh, actually no um, or none 
uh, unexpected side effects. It's not a drug, it's not surgery. Um, it is a stimulation of the mucosa and the neural ends in the mucosa of the nose. Uh, and therefore it is uh, sorted under what's called neurostimulation. And so that is our technical field. It also has demonstrated the preventive effect uh, over some time, which is good. So it's sorted in under the preventive uh, treatment options. This procedure is very simple to learn um, for anybody skilled in, in healthcare. Uh, usually it's, it's performed by a registered nurse. The company also uh, carries a quite uh, impressive patent portfolio. Um, we have 70 patent uh, approved in 24 markets, and there are also ongoing three applications for further patents. Migraine is, of course, what we focus on right now because that is uh, by far the most valuable asset that we have in a comp company. But the other indication, uh, the chronic rhinitis or stuffed nose or nasal congestion is something that we've been selling for a while and we have introduced in several uh, selected markets. That is also, of course, important and valuable in the company. But in comparison to the market for migraine, it is actually taking a second place. But it's worth men mentioning that the chronic rhinitis uh, potentially is also huge. Uh, a lot of patients suffer from this worldwide. Um, and this treatment is then positioned between what is commonly used as, uh, or called the nasal sprays of various types, uh, decongestive sprays uh, that you take when you have a cold or, or, or stuffed nose in general. This is also used for chronic rhinitis. And then in some, uh, fewer uh, number of patients uh, so that there are also several types of, of um, surgical procedures um, that can be uh, deployed. Um, they cost a lot more and they, they carry some risk, of course. Uh, so we are really already facing a, a growing market for our, our indication in chronic rhinitis in our few markets that we will talk about a little bit later. But you can also note that uh, fully uh, addressed, uh, the, the market potential uh, is quite large. So um, uh, per million people, uh, we have around uh, po total potential of, of 5 million uh, Swedish crowns in revenue. But back a little bit to, to the migraine and uh, the current uh, therapies um, and what the market is worth. And this is based on, on uh, analysis from um, various analysis services around the world. But you can say in general that for the seven major markets in the world, it's about $9 billion currently or in a few years. Uh, and the growth is very uh, drastic uh, for pharma. The Botox market doesn't grow as much uh, because it uh, has been in the market for quite some time, but it's little less than a billion dollar per year in a couple of years, and that is the projection. Um, MedTech, and certainly then for neuromodulation, the industry that we belong to, um, you have uh, also an impressive uh, revenue, but that is mostly for implanted neuromodulators, uh, various types of pacemakers for neurostimulation concerning uh, chronic pain and depression and Parkinson, etc. Uh, and that is uh, estimated to reach approximately $8 billion uh, in four years time. So it's rather rich, but we have focused on a few markets in order to build our case. And you can see them here on the map. Um, that is still a population of about 200 million people. And if you use the prevalences uh, for these um, conditions that I talked about, you can see that we can address uh, quite a large number of patients already on these small market selections. Um, and this is where we focus our efforts right now. And the reason for this is uh, the strategy for us is first and foremost to build a proof of concept in market 
so that we can demonstrate that this technology and this treatment can be sold even by a small company, company like us. Um, the second um, uh, strategy is of course to finalize the ongoing um, clinical study for migraine. And uh, we all do all this in order to build a solid exit case, which is also clearly communicated strategy from the company. And it can be portrayed like this, that we on the left side here, build three check boxes that we know is necessary for a su successful exit. Uh, a good uh, IPR portfolio, which we do have. Um, we build on the proof of concept um, to demonstrate that it's sellable. And we need also scientific evidence in terms of, of uh, results from clinical studies to underpin this uh, value. On the right side, <coughs> excuse me, you can see how we do that build up of the proof of concept. It's actually by engaging patients uh, and also early on private healthcare providers um, to later gain acceptance in a few markets and then lead over to, to public uh, healthcare provision and also in some cases, probably reimbursement uh, or insurance decisions to, to um, finance this kind of treatment. Um, so this is how we build the value for our shareholders and to get that value affirmed, which is of course the essential portion of, of building an exit case. So this very simple picture uh, actually demonstrates how uh, our entire strategy is, is planned. And um, we are far ahead in this. Uh, the last thing to do is, is of course, to, to finalize the, the migraine study, which will happen sometime this fall. And uh, we are already engaged in, in uh, now uh, building the proof of concept in the market. Um, and this, of course, has been accelerated uh, as we, I wouldn't say surprisingly, but with a relatively low uh, probability, managed to clear our C mark for the migraine condition just a few weeks ago, which was communicated. Um, we have plans uh, and preparations uh, in place, but they will now be accelerated so that we can uh, get to the market and start selling the migraine indication. All our distributors are prepared for this, um, but we have to kick in a higher gear now, and that's uh, undergoing uh, as we speak. Um, the um, um, effect of this will of course be seen, but as always with life science in general and medtech in particular, it will take time to build a market impact. The importance for us is to have an impact that is measurable in those markets that we have selected. So that is uh, the short version of, of the presentation of Cordate and uh, all that I wanted to, to um, uh, give you today. Uh, so now Olivia, uh, it's back to your questions. Thank you for your presentation, Anders. And uh, yeah, I have some questions for you. Uh, can you say something about the importance of the C marking in chronic migraine? Well, I mean, it's, it, it is the one sole thing that we've been working so hard to achieve for so many years now. Uh, it is, of course, necessary to be able to or allowed to uh, market and sell your products on, on the market. And uh, it's just that that we succeeded to do this with our our plan B, if you want, based on the interim data. Um, that has been a fantastic achievement by the team. Um, our plan A, which was more probable, was that uh, we would have to wait for the full study results and uh, that uh, we would then do the CMR routine under the new MDR uh, regimen. Uh, but now we cleared this before, so I can't uh, exaggerate the importance of having this 
made so early. It's basically a good year or more earlier than, than even our highest um, hopes were set at. So, so uh, we are all of a sudden in a situation where, where we are year, a year plus ahead of our schedule. Yeah, very exciting. And um, your plan is to finish the migraine study after the summer. Uh, what do you hope to be able to communicate from the study? Well, I mean, the, the pandemic situation has, of course, uh, as communicated, uh, shifted this forward uh, constantly. Uh, now we see the end of that mess and uh, we are actually looking forward now to have a much higher production from our uh, testing sites, both in Finland and, and Germany. Um, so when that is done, uh, we will communicate the general outcome of the study and then immediately prepare a manuscript for, for a scientific article uh, with the help of our scientists that are engaged in the study. And uh, of course, that article is, is quite important for us. Uh, it will become a great sales tool for our salespeople with our distributors. And it's also going to be good uh, in discussions with various reimbursement uh, entities that, that will decide about uh, how to reimburse this, this uh, treatment. So uh, the study is still very important, even though uh, we are not in the situation where it's absolutely crucial uh, as the CMR is already achieved. And which milestones are you most looking forward to achieving in the near future? Well, we have a few milestones, of course, and, and those are also communicated. There is a, a program going on in Saudi Arabia where the Minister of Health is um, examining this uh, treatment for rhinitis. Maybe it can be achieved a national decision to allow this treatment, which would be a great thing. We are also looking forward to be able to report sales starts in first and foremost Italy, uh, which are uh, best prepared and then the Nordic area and potentially also Israel, uh, which are first out. So so a lot of stuff that we are looking forward to be able to report in the in the coming months. Um, from there, of course, then the, the finalization of the study and uh, also the publication of the study uh, article. Uh, so those are the nearest. Thank you for your presentation today, Anders. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching.